my dad moved every three or four years to a completely different continent. For example, we went from Rome to Taiwan, then to Malawi. I had to just start over and make new friends. And my brother didn't fare so well. He actually had some social anxiety around that. And for me, I had it at first. But I, I remember from a very young age, I made a, a life decision that I was going to figure out how to make friends no matter where my dad moved. Because I never wanted to feel that feeling of like I've lost everything and I'm alone again. So I developed from a young, very young age. And I want to share with you today my secrets on how to do this so that you can have this life skill to make lifelong friends for the rest of your life. And my dad is really good at this. My dad is in his 60s and he still has friends that are just like really good friends, even in his 60s. And my mom kind of just hangs out with them. She doesn't, right? Because my dad had this ability as a diplomat and inherited to me, I want to teach that to you today. Would you like that? Let's get into it. Wherever I go, I always assume people have good intentions. And I can tell you after 37 years on this realm <laughs> that the majority of people are just doing the best they can to pursue what they believe is happiness. And so if you assume people have good intentions, you, you play tit for tat. In other words, I'm going to assume and reward you in the beginning based on good intentions. Then whatever you do next, I match it. Again, the law of equivalent exchange, whatever you do, I match. Then from that standpoint, I can't go wrong. I give people the benefit of the doubt and I recognize when they don't return or reciprocate. And I give them maybe one or two chances depending on the situation and then I make a decision, right? So this is my attitude towards my social interactions. One of the things I did really well as a kid was I had this like ability to just like, you know, I'm not going to take it personally. You know, this is not about me. It's just about people getting to know me. They, they, they reject maybe my approach, but they're not rejecting me as a person. So I go up to the first girl. I go up to the second girl. I go up to the third girl. Hey, do you want to be my friend? And just things happen. Now in high school, this backfired because you had some bullies, right? And that didn't work as well. But what I found out is that if I can be vulnerable with people that have good intentions, most of the time they will be vulnerable back. And if you're the first person to show some vulnerability that's like not too deep in the beginning, but in a way that makes sense, they will give it back to you. For example, you know, I just spent a year recovering, kind of like reconnecting with my roots and just I like I left my old job, even though I made a lot of money. Have you ever been through something like that in life where you just wanted to, to start over? And like, yeah, I can relate to that. So that's like a little bit vulnerable, right? But then I'm connecting that vulnerability to a universal emotion, which is everybody has a point where they wanted to change their life or to rediscover some other area of life. And that's relatable. I wear my heart on my sleeve, but I am not naive enough to the point where if someone's going to take advantage of it, I'm not going to recognize it. And I don't take any rejection personally. They're not rejecting me as a person. They're just rejecting perhaps they had a bad mood that day or they're rejecting the way I did the approach. But I never take it personally. So from that angle, if I just do enough approaches, I can always make friends wherever I go. Another question I always ask is, what's valuable for them? What can I add to this person? You know, some people might need more friends. Some people don't know how to talk to girls. Or some people might just... They have this like, um, some people have the superficial value system. So I have to sometimes bypass that by saying, by throwing in some demonstrations of value. Like, you know, yeah, I've been around the block. You know, I've, I know what you're talking about when dating these girls and I'm a former Googler. Um, you might not be a former Googler, but you might say, you know, I worked at Fortune 500 companies or yeah, I've, I've been in this industry. Something that proves to them that you're at their level. Because some people are just superficial. Then once you pass that superficial bar, then you can like you take the responsibility of bringing it back and getting to know them, and they're gonna start to realize, oh, this person not only does he meet my paper criteria, but now he's getting to know me as a real person, and that is really attractive because not many people take the time or the energy to do that. Sometimes you'll meet people that are truly evil. Um, I would say of all the people I met, I probably met one for sure, maybe two people that were just the criminals. They were criminal. They they would steal, lie, cheat. They hurt a lot of people. And in that situation, I asked my dad the same thing. I would say in those situations, just run, run. Because you don't want to get into a battle with these people because they play dirty. And at that point, those people look for fuel. They look for like victims. Your best bet is to just cut contact, report them. Don't get tangled with dogs or you'll end up with fleas.